Today we're here at uh, Windy City Rods and Restorations. I'm here with Mark Pappas. Uh, he has been one of the caretakers of a couple of Grumpy's cars. With the uh, the passing of Grumpy Jenkins in the past uh, couple of weeks, um, how has that affected uh, the way people look at what you're doing in tribute to him? Um, I, I think it will definitely bring it out more. More people will definitely have interest. Um, but Bill was the kind of guy that you normally had interest in anyway and uh, um, you know his passing was kind of sudden Bill was up in age but um, his passing was still kind of un un unexpected and uh, I know that we've uh, been contacted by a lot of local tracks and some NHRA tracks to do some uh, tributes with Bill um, probably in Indy and Maple Grove and uh, NHRA's contacted about letting Joe Lapone Jr. Um, drive this car in a missing man formation at one of the uh, NHRA events this year. Well, that's um, that's fantastic. We're uh, we're happy that you actually you built these for him. And uh, back in November, you were able to bring him up here to Chicago with the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals, and I was able to talk to him. It was a it was a real uh, you know treasure to actually meet him. And that was the last time that he actually made a public appearance at a show. Is that correct? I believe it was. I know that the week he passed. Um, it was rumored that him and Jerry Stahl were going to do a autograph signing. Um, but they have, talking to the shop, I believe that was his last public appearance. You know, and uh, I think everybody that did get to meet him, I know I have a poster he signed uh, hanging on my wall, um, and uh, I'm pretty proud of having that. I show everybody when they come over. Um, why don't you talk about this uh, 1968 uh, Camaro behind you and, uh, and what the inspiration of this was and uh, maybe a little bit about the history of it. This car, like, like you say, is a 1968 replica of Grumpy's toy. This is a replica. Um, pretty correct. Uh, Bill did say uh, it was, he, he gave me the blessing on it. This was Bill's dollar for dollar most winning car. Uh, Bill, for a very little investment, made a lot of money and this was the first car that was campaigned in, in pro stock. It was in a final race in 1970, Winter Nationals against Ronnie Sox, where uh, Bill was the underdog in the finals, but uh, put him on a trailer. And, when, when we were doing the car, um, when I first started having some kind of uh, uh, correspondence with Bill and Jake, the foreman at the shop, we talked about the idea of perhaps Bill building a period correct motor for this car. Bill was up for it and um, what you see here is pretty much uh, a duplicate of something that would be for the day in 1970 Pro Stock. Uh, it's a four, 460 cubic inch motor. These carburetors actually were on one of Bill's pro stock motors okay. somewhere in the 70s that he brought out of retirement and kind of donated them into the project. All right. um, the motor is stamped Jenkins competition and we're pretty proud of it. We, we did as correct as possible. You know, it's still a work in progress. We have a few little tweaks to do it, but uh, you know, we feel it's a very close tribute to, uh, to now is this just a show car uh, or you actually have you taken it down the track we've taken it down the track not in its current condition we will take it down the track this summer as a tribute to bill okay. this so this third gen camaro this one is uh, another one that you did and uh, we've actually had some uh, some uh, good times with the uh, video in this going down a couple of tracks here in, in the chicago area tell me about this one this car, um, you know, the, the whole nostalgic pro stock thing is something very dear to my heart. And we started it three years ago with the rear Morrison car, and there's other cars in the area. There's Bill Neary's uh, Warren Johnson car, um, Scott Schultz's Jeff Wick car. And what we did with this is, um, you know, my first car was a Lee Shepard car, tribute car. And my idols growing up were Grumpy Jenkins and Lee Shepard. And I said, how fitting would it be to, you know, to have a Grumpy's toy replica. And this car kind of found its way to me and we brought it, restored. it was an old race car, we restored it and we primarily built it to run in a nostalgic pro stock circuit. And um, you know, again, Bill gave us his blessing on it. Fantastic, well I'm looking forward to seeing it again out, uh, out at the local tracks. And uh, we're gonna go to this uh, real car. I guess this one was lost. This was a, a what year, Vega? This is a um, 72 Vega, basically. It's a body in white, never VIN. This is the real. Okay, um, body in white from General Motors. So it came as just a body. No VIN. Yeah, just a body with a subframe. And uh, 
It was immediately taken to California to get acid dipped. And then this car was being built um, and was rushed into service when the number nine car crashed. Okay. So what went started out as a, you know, a, a moderately paced build turned into a 18, 19 hour a day build because the nine car was totaled. To own a real pro stock car has always been a dream. To own a real Jenkins car, it, it, I couldn't even fathom the possibility of ever happening. Well, after establishing a relationship with Bill, um, Bill was instrumental in me getting the car. Oh, that's great. That's fantastic. And uh, you've got it here at uh, Windy City Rods and Restorations, and you're going to have it rebuilt. Uh, who's actually going to do the, uh, the engineer or manage the build of this vehicle? Windy City Rods is going to do the restoration. Okay. Um, unfortunately, Bill was in the process of building a correct 331 Pro Stock motor okay. in his passing. Um, Jenkins Competition has you know, assured me that they have enough information to go on and finish the build. So we'll have a correct Jenkins 331 Pro Stock motor from the era. It'll be a Lenko shifted you know, car. As far as the um, engineering of the car, the previous owner worked for Bill for a lot of years and gave me a lot of information. And um, again, it, you know, Bill's untimely death uh, really caught us by surprise, but Bill gave me a lot of information. I would fax him a piece of paper by, on Monday of a list of questions, and usually by Thursday or Friday, Jake would get back to me, and if it was a little more in-depth, Bill would actually tell me things, and I have some pretty good notes. So we think that, uh, and with the Doug Boyce book, we feel that we have enough information to make this car dead on correct. I know the guys here at Windy City have done a lot of research. We're looking for parts constantly. And I have to say that Jenkins competition um, really is a wealth of historic parts. Okay. And I think that once you're in their trust and they will release some of those parts. So between the um, painstaking research going on right here in the shop and what Jenkins competition is able to do for us, I feel that uh, in short order we will have this car back to Grumpy's tent. Well, Mark, uh, thanks for uh, having us over here at the shop. Uh, you know, didn't even know this place was here. It's amazing what I'm finding out as, uh, as we go around town and uh, see the things that, uh, that people are actually collecting, building, and uh, you're doing a fine job with, uh, with what you have here. This is, uh, this is a real tribute to uh, a man that's a legend in the, uh, in the motorsport and uh, will, will dearly be missed. And lastly, I'd like to say that, uh, you know, Bill, you didn't fool me. After uh, getting to know you, you were anything but grumpy. You were probably one of the uh, most honest, sincere individuals I ever met. Gonna miss you.